Secret in the Forest, a short story by Paul McCann. Megan and John had been in love for many years, but when their love grew old, they became cold and distant to each other. Both of them knew that there was a problem, but they were unsure how they could make things better. The wonderful thing about the situation was they both wanted to recapture that special magic of love, and that's why fate stepped in to help them. One morning as they were having breakfast, Megan said, John, we always working and never spend time together much anymore. John looked at her and replied, So what are you trying to tell me? Do you want to go on a journey with me? Immediately John said, Sure, where are we going? Megan sighed and took a deep breath and said, Somewhere where we've never been before. John looked a little worried, but replied, Why not, Megan? (laughs) We can take some time off work. Let's go discover somewhere different. Okay, where? Suddenly the phone rang, and John took the call. Hello, John here. How can I help? The person on the other end of the line said, Your order is ready for delivery. Can you please give us the postal address? John said, What order was that? The person on the other end of the line said, One special black forest strawberry and chocolate cake. John looked over at Megan and said, Did you order a black forest cake? She looked puzzled, and she said, What are you talking about? John spoke over the phone again and said, You have the wrong number. And he hung up the phone. Megan said, I was thinking of booking into one of those beach resorts for a few days. John replied, Sure. Megan said, So who was on the phone? Someone who said we had ordered a black forest cake. Suddenly the phone rang again. John took the call and said, Hello. The person on the other end said, Are you picking up your black forest cake or shall we have it delivered? John replied, You have the wrong number. And he hung the phone. Megan looked at her wristwatch, and she said, So, if you're in agreement, I'll make the booking today for the resort. John replied, Yep, okay. Megan responded, Are you sure? The phone rang again, but this time Megan took the call. Hello, Megan here. What can I do for you? We have your black forest cake ready to be delivered. Megan replied, Who am I talking to? Suddenly the phone line went dead and the electric in the house went off. The lights turned off, the radio, the TV. Megan said, What is going on this morning? John replied, Probably just a power outage. Nothing to worry about. Megan replied, Did you pay the electric bill? Of course I did. Maybe it's a sign, John said. What are you talking about? A sign, Megan replied. John said, well, think about it. A strange caller talking about some black forest cake and you saying we should go somewhere different. So all I'm saying is maybe we should 
go to the Black Forest. <laughs> I've heard it's beautiful there. Megan responded, It sounds crazy, but okay, let's do that. You book the tickets and we'll go. Life sometimes is about seizing the moment, taking a chance to do something a little different. And within a few days, Megan and John were on a plane travelling to Germany, bound for southwest of the country to a place known as the Black Forest. John and Megan picked up their hire car at the airport and were back on the freeway south to a campsite deep in the heart of the Black Forest on their journey to discover new places. John was driving and Megan was reading some travel brochures. The car radio was playing some good drive music songs. Megan looked up and she said, The travel brochure has some beautiful scenery photos of the Black Forest. John replied, I've heard that there are thousands of missing persons who have gone there. And there's some res- strange re- happenings. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, missing persons? Well, I hope we aren't added to that number when we get there. They both laughed. When they arrived at the Black Forest, a thick fog was coming down. Suddenly when they entered the Black Forest... The car radio lost transmission, and following that, their mobile phones lost their service. And as if that wasn't enough, the car stalled. John pulled over to the side of the road. He tried a number of times, but wasn't able to get the car started. Megan said, That's great. No phone network. The car's broke down. You know nothing about cars, and now we're stranded here in this forest. This is your idea and your fault. So what do you suggest we do now? John took a deep breath. Come on, then. Let's go and find some help. Megan looked a bit worried. Are you crazy? I don't like the idea of walking through this forest with God only knows what kind of wild beasts are out there. Okay then, stay here by yourself then, John said. And Megan responded. Don't you dare think of leaving me here alone. John laughed and said, (laughs) It's all part of the journey. You're the one that wanted to do something different. Okay then, sure. If that's what you want, let's go. They both got out of the car and John pointed to one of the forest tracks saying, Let's go that way. Megan replied, Lead the way. They had walked a short distance and they heard a chainsaw being used. John said, All right, that sounds promising. Let's go and see if we can get some help. A little while later, they found the man with the chainsaw cutting down a tree. They both called out to him and approached carefully. But the man just kept working, as he never heard anything because of the earmuffs he had on. So John went over and carefully tapped him on the shoulder. And the man stopped working. Hello, uh, my name is John. Do you speak English? Yes, I speak English. My name 
is Hans. How can I help you, John? Uh, I have a little bit of difficulty starting my car. Do you know anywhere I could get some help? Uh, you must f follow this track to where you will find your dream, awaiting in a place where colorful birds are singing, but tread softly and don't disturb them. My, yes, my job here now is done, John. I must go now to chase the clouds in a world so high above this one, in the presence of unexplainable wonder. Hans walked off at speed, leaving John and Megan speechless. Oh, uh, did, you, did you get that, Megan? Was he for real? They kept walking along the path, looking around, not knowing what to expect. And then they came to a place where a golden light was shining down upon a lady who was playing a harp. And all around her were colourful birds that were singing. John, this is the place that Hans spoke of. Let us tread softly and Ask the lady with the harp where we can find some help. They gently made their way over to the lady playing the harp, but the sounds of the harp were so beautiful that John and Megan drifted off into a deep sleep. When they awoke, they found themselves in a small cottage where an old woman was busy making cakes. She looked over at Megan and John and she said, You approached them. You. You're awake now. <laughs> Welcome to my cottage. My name is Lisa and I can tell you both come a very long way. You must be very hungry, I'm sure. So let me bring you some tea and cake. She brought them a tray with some tea and cake and said, This is my special Black Forest strawberry and chocolate surprise cake. It's made here in the heart of the Black Forest. As soon as John and Megan tasted the cake, they found they were once again passionately in love. It was almost too good to be true. Lisa smiled and she said, My gift is to make cakes that people will love to eat and anyone who eats my cake here in this forest will fall in love. Now go and tell all your friends to come here and taste my black forest cakes. I will be here waiting for them. Megan replied, We have no idea how we got here. And John said, We have no idea how to get back to our car. Lisa laughed and she said, <laughs> That's the secret of this forest. Everyone who comes here has been sent for a reason. You have found what is your dream now. Arise and go to where you will see a silver lake, where a white swan will be swimming across the still water. 
There you will find two golden rings hanging from a beehive. Put them on immediately and the love that you have will now last for an eternity. Go now. John and Megan left the cottage and made their way along the golden path into the forest. Looking around as they went. And then they came to a silver lake where two golden rings were hanging from a beehive and a white swan was swimming across the lake. This is the place, John, said Megan. They both put their arms around each other and embraced and they put the rings on their fingers and as they did, they fell into a deep sleep. And when they awoke, they were sitting back in their car on the side of the road. As they opened their eyes, they saw the love sparkling in each other's eyes. And in their hearts, they felt a love so strong and so true. Megan said, How can this be? John replied, I don't know. But other people have to hear of this place. John turned the key and the car engine started. And they drove out of the forest and back to the campsite where he had booked. And they spent four days before returning home again. And they started to tell everyone about their experience. And they encouraged everyone they knew to go and find Lisa's cottage in the heart of the Black Forest. The end.